Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are talking about Load Runner tutorial series. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be getting started with the very first component of the Load Runner, which is called as Virtual User Generator, in short, VUGen. VUGen is a component of Load Runner, which is basically used to prepare the script and finalize it, which you will be making use of in controller to apply the load and run a performance test. As a part of VUGen, you will be understanding a lot of things that how you can actually update your script, customize it in order to add more parameters or data drive it and a lot many other things. But today, we are just talking about a basic navigation and getting started with the VUGen in order to understand that how you can actually start working with the VUGen and following that, we'll get into each of the concepts one after the other. So let's get started and understand the navigation of VUGen today. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding further by getting into the very first component of the load runner, which is Virtual User Generator, in short called as VUGen. In this tutorial, we'll be covering what is VUGen, features of VUGen and getting started with VUGen. In order to get started, we have an icon here created on our desktop shortcut called as Virtual User Generator. You just have to double click on this in order to launch it. And this particular launch will definitely take you to the Virtual User Generator and we do have other components separately. So you have three different icons in order to uh, look for that and uh, begin or launch your controller or analysis on the desktop. So right now we're just going to have a quick navigation to virtual user generator and understand that how to make use of a virtual user generator to create our scripts for performance testing. Now this is the landing page where you basically come down once you start your launch of the virtual user generator and uh, the very first section which is being displayed to you is called as a start page. Now the start page basically allows you to navigate between the recent scripts or recent solutions you might have from previously or you can also create a new script or open an existing script. Right there, you do get some of the useful links to start working on other applications or understand more about the uh, solution which you have actually installed for this performance testing automation. That is your load runner. And also you do get a lot of help center option here directly instead of going to Google and searching for it. So this is a direct quick access buttons to reach out to their blogs and community to get any kind of help. Plus you do have the help options right here like load runner tutorials. If you click on that, it will take you to the load runner page and allow you to look at some of the tutorials and resources and knowledge base in fact. Now let's pick up a new particular test so that all these other options which are disabled right now can be enabled because these options get enabled only when you have a new script with you. So the file which we create in our VUGen is called as a user script and named as something.usr which is your user script and it is obviously to create one user instance with the activity what you want to perform. So all you need to do is click on this plus button here in order to create a new script and there comes the list of the protocols. Of course, protocols are defined as the set of protocols or set of rules which basically your application is built upon. So as far as you know your application well, you can actually record on it and conduct the performance testing. But if in case you don't know what's the protocol used in your application, uh, think that would be difficult for you to start working. So make sure that you get to know what protocols have been used in your application in order to identify any of these protocol which my load runner supports today. Now that's where it is a world class solution for the performance testing which basically provides you all these sort of protocols which you can actually make use of. Sometimes you do have an application which is built on multiple protocols. That's where these protocols comes with a checkbox now. If in case you want to make use of multiple of them in order to make your objects and APIs uh, readable and identifiable, you can make use of multiple protocols as well. Not only that, of course, Loader comes with mobile and IoT protocols as well to conduct mobile testing. And then there's two quick links to 
quickly get with the popular or recent protocols used. So let's use the most simple and what our application is built on called as web HTTP HTML. Below you will definitely find a default name to it which if you want you can rename it as per your choice and location will be by default the document section or documents folder of your system where exactly the scripts will be getting saved. If you want you can customize this in fact and if you want to save the solutions you can separately save that as well. We'll be talking about solutions a little later. So let's click on create to create an interface where we can see what exactly a Vuegen consists of. As soon as it launches, so the very first thing what you see is a canvas or I can call it as an action where you actually write your script which you want to test. And of course the script will be completely about the application which you are interacting with and will consist of information which you actually want to interact with and measure the performance of. So by default you get an action here called as action.c. The extension .c confirms us that whatever we write will be using a language C in order to write our scripting. But generally, we make use of a record option here to capture the events and APIs from the application while interacting with it. That we will be looking in upcoming sessions that how to record a script using Loadrunner. Also to add, of course, action is not only the action which is available in the uh, script which you create as a part of Vuegen. Here by default you get three actions that is vuser init.c, action and vuser n. Now we have three actions by default and in simple terms to add here that vuser init is a special function or special action provided in Vuegen which basically iterates once in the beginning of the test. It's just like annotation before class. That means you want to launch an application or log in into the application, but you just want to do this once and don't want to iterate ever. So any such activity which you want to do once in the beginning of the test, you can add them here and that will be performed only once whenever you run your test, but at the beginning of the test. After that, automatically it will switch to the action part where your business process can be recorded and it can be iterated if you want to. So only the action part will be iterated in Vuegen and you cannot iterate the Vuser underscore init. The underscore init basically stands for initialize. That means whatever applications you want to initialize, you can have the script here to do that. Similarly, on the other hand, Vuser end is the third action which you get by default in Vuegen. And here you basically include the closure activities, but this with the same properties just like we use in it. That means you want to run it only once, but at the end of the test. So you can generally have your log of script or log out script in vuser n. So this is automatically understood based on the architecture of vuegen that by default no matter if you have a script or you don't have a script, it will start with vuser in it then go to the action and then vuser end in order to run a particular script which you may have. Let's quickly get a quick navigation of the menu items here. There are a lot of things, file option which allows you to open, new, save it, print and so on which we will be seeing in more detail. Then we have got some edit options as well like undo, redo, cut, copy, paste and change the format of the text what you're looking at. And there are a lot of things which actually can be supported for making your interaction with the load runner more convenient. You also have a lot of view tabs which you can see here right from the solution explorer, bookmarks, outline, thumbnail explorer, errors and so on which you can actually see at the bottom here. If in case you don't see any of the tabs here, you just have to click. For example, I don't see a step navigator right now. No, we have it here. And probably I don't have what? Um, I think I have everything. Snapshot? Yeah, snapshot I don't have. So let's click on this. And we have got the snapshot here. So that's how simple it is just to add a view. Similarly, the search option allows you to search a particular action in order to search for any kind of you know statement or keyword written. Design allows you to insert anything in the action like creating a new action, deleting an action, or renaming an action. Plus, if you want, you can include a new step, start the transaction, end the transaction, REST APIs, run, renderable points, comment, log message, all those sort of things can be done. Also, when it comes to data-driven testing, you do have a parameter creation possible here, which you can actually make use of. Design Studio is something which basically allows you to uh, Check for the correlation parameters and that will definitely set it up you know, automatically or manually as well. 
Uh, recording option allows you to do the recording of the script. The replay has again some great options here with the runtime settings. We'll be getting into most of these things in our tutorials, so don't worry about them right now. I'm just giving you a quick, quick overview of that. And do have tools option where you can actually integrate uh, additional things, plus you have the tool settings in the options which you can configure as per your expectation. You can also integrate your ALM for the configuration management here. So if you are a user of ALM, you can make use of it to integrate here and capture, or you can make use of your Git to do the same job. And you can have multiple windows of the uh, you know tabs here, which you can see like we have got three tabs open right now. So I can actually um, navigate between them. And of course, there is a help menu. And this help menu has amazing documentation for you in order to learn VueGen. What else? On the left side, you get everything about that particular script, what is required as a solution to support the script in order to run. So of course, it starts with the list of the actions which you can see. And here are your header files which are used for the C function to work. So when it comes to C programming, of course, we need a header file. So if I double click on that, I can see all these like hash include lrun.h, hash include webapi.h, and hash include lrw custom body.h. So all my header files are lying here in the globals.h, which supports my these actions to execute. Also, you have some quick access of these options like runtime settings, parameters, recording report, and replay run results. So you don't really have to navigate between the menus to see anything. You have a quick launch option here, and you can always move from there to here. At the bottom, you have Solution Explorer plus Step Navigator. So when you write the script in the action, you can actually have the function list here, and you can easily swap between a function to another function instead of scrolling through your script. At the bottom, we have a pane here to see our uh, the different view options like output, task, error, runtime data, which is used uh, like a parameter for different iterations to run which will be displayed to you when we do the data-driven testing here. And snapshot is basically to compare an iteration with the another. So assume that if your iteration 1 passes but iteration 2 fails, then this snapshot window can allow you to compare and check that what exactly went wrong and what is that you need to correct and how. So there are a lot of such things and there is a quick toolbar as well which you can actually make use of and you have a great quick access option available plus the marketplace link in order to get anything what you may need to integrate with your load runner. So this is just one of the component of our load runner. Don't forget this is not the entire load runner. This is just one of the component called as ViewGen and here we'll be only preparing the script which you would like to call for the execution of the performance scenario. So here we are not going to do any kind of performance testing. We are just getting prepared with the script which we will use for the controller component in order to apply the load. So script is only to create the script and we cannot apply the load here. Okay, so that was a quick navigation to make you understand about ViewGen. The very next session will be getting started with recording a particular script and running that as well. So we will see two options that is record and replay. And we will see what more comes up when we interact with an application called as Web Tours and what steps are required to perform that in order to create a wonderful script which we can actually make use of for the load runner. So let's have a look on that in the next session. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.